that mm -hmm. This is the Sidgwick Council on Aging Board of Directors meeting. Today is June 13th of 2012. And I'd like to do an introduction to the board, starting with Meg. Meg Stillman. Richard Mitchell. Dale Baylog. Jim Harmon. Pam Davis. Stone Powers. Jerry T. Morning. And Florence Cho. Thank you. Um, the minutes of the May 9th meeting. You have them, and if you review them, that means, um, if we could have a motion to accept them. If you, if, is that ready? Read them? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion. It's passed. Florence, staff and direct report, that please. This, uh, the, uh, this is my director's report. The big news for us in May, we do, this is for May of 2012, and talks about the things that were going on then. The big news for us in May was our acceptance into GATRA, Greater Attleboro Taunton Regional Transportation Association. Pam and I went to the regional office in Taunton and made our presentation. I am happy to say we were voted in by all those present. GATRA will begin as soon as the contract is signed, which, you, which should be sometime in July. The Council on Aging will continue to run transportation and will con, uh, continue, uh, continually be making changes as they occur. We are excited to begin this process, especially since the plan is to connect us to our bordering towns for more access. I will keep you updated as new facts come to light. We held two functions at the Situate Harbor Community Building this month, and knitting has moved over there with plans to add more programs into the mix. Yoga and chair yoga will be going this month, and we are planning a 4th of July party there on July 10th and a large caregivers meeting on July 18th. The, uh, the, C, the Council on Aging's access to this building has allowed us to increase those services that can't be done here. However, we are experiencing one issue with the arrangement at the Situate Harbor Community Building. Because of its location, cell phone access is non-existent. We have some seniors who have medical issues, and this is a fragile population. I have requested a landline for the building. We can unplug it and take it with us uh, if it is a concern. I have registered, I, requ uh, I also requested a desk and a chair for the volunteers that will be there regularly. Al Bandit is out of town this week, but he will get back to me next week. The senior center building has been tested for air quality. That's this building. Um, but, um, and we are waiting for the report. We've had some concerns. We do have mildew. We do have mold here in the building. And um, the staff is concerned, as am I. Um, so we're waiting to see what they came up with. Um, the summer is upon us, and some of our programs shut down for the winter. Uh, until the winter. They have shut down for the summer. Sorry about that. However, we are adding several new exercises programs in the fall. With the advent of summer, it will be a good time to work on GATRA and to complete many other housekeeping chores. We will also be writing two grants that will be due this summer. We anticipate a very busy summer season at the Situa Council of Aging for July and August. Respectfully submitted. This is our program, we put on our programs. May is the last full month that some of our programs will run. Some of our exercise programs take the summer off, and because of this, they stop at the beginning of June and will not resume until the first part of September. However, several of our programs will continue for the summer. We had two special events in May, one titled The Right Move, which was held in conjunction with Edward Jones Financial and Sotheby's. The workshop was based on making the right decision on selling or keeping your home. This was well attended and was held at the Situate Harbor Community Building. 
several su senior suggested workshops that they felt would be helpful to them. We will be planning those for the fall. The second event was sponsored by Life Care and South Shore Hospital. It dealt with health care proxies and the importance of having and updating them. The luncheon was delicious and the seniors were pleased with the workshop. They all filled out new health care proxies. The event was at the senior center with 40, which is our capacity, of seniors attending. As with all ventures of this type, venues of this type, we had more requests than move. Uh, programs that are still being attended at 27 Brook Street through the summer are going to be Tai Chi, Western, uh, Country Western Dancing, the Art Class, uh, Men's Breakfast, and Bridge. Unfortunately, as much as I would like to have luncheons over at the Situate Harbor uh, building, I cannot do too many. They need to be catered if it is a large lunch and we can't afford the cost associated with these events. On July 4th, on the 10th, uh, a lunch will be done there and the seniors and the seniors kickoff days will be done at the Maritime in August. And it is only because of donations made for the events that we're able to do that. We are hoping to meet with some of our active supporters and plan to be made, um, make some choices on the use of the Situate Harbor building um, that will benefit the seniors respectfully submitted. P.S. The newsletter is going to be published on the 15th, going to the publisher on the 15th. Please call with any additions you want to have put in there. All right. Um, these, we get reports from our outreach workers and our transportation on a monthly basis. Um, we have this, this is a, okay. We have uh, Quincy Ann Cutler is the transportation coordinator here and she will continue even when Gatra is here. We had, in May, we had 510 daily rides, which means locally or to uh, Cohasset um, and on the Norwell line. And the link, which is our program that runs to Boston, goes from Plymouth, can go to Brockton VA. It's a medical uh, uh, ride that is uh, we do a lot of chemotherapy over to the South Shore Hospital and up to Boston. We also uh, do uh, the dialysis. We have several uh, seniors who have uh, problems and need to have dialysis. Um, they, uh, it's a costly program, but it's very well used. Um, this month, it's, we're, I think we're going to see even more. Um, the map which is um, a five-town uh, five transportation. We have not, we didn't use this month. Uh, the volunteers, drivers, we have volunteer drivers who take seniors to their medical appointments. They don't go to Boston, but they go just about everywhere else. And they pick them up at their house, and they drop them off, and they've been doing it for some time. Some of them, we do have a fund that allows them to be reimbursed for transportation for the fuel that's used. Uh, most of them do not come back and ask for it. Uh, the total of rides in uh, May for, the, for, uh, for transportation was six, 605. Total volunteer hours was 53. <coughs> we had 29, vo 29 volunteers on uh, on the van and 24 private and nine escorts. The escorts go on to the vans because a lot of our seniors, we have a large population that's um, in their 80s and even over that, 85. Some of them have impediments that make it difficult for them to shop if they're going to, um, to the, uh, the store for shopping. So, um, and some of them just have a hard time you know, uh, getting getting around. So we have uh, some wonderful volunteers who provide um, the service. They escort them. They go. They get on the van and go with the senior. Get off the van. Help them with their shopping. Help them get safely to the doctor's office or wherever they're going. Um, the total miles driven by our council on aging vans last month were fifteen hundred and forty-nine. 
uh, this is our outreach department. The outreach department is a department that does a lot, uh, provides resources, does, um, helps with insurance, um, helps families. Um, we do protective services there. All of the social services are done through outreach and it's a critical, uh, critical. Um, the outreach workers go out and make home visits when a senior needs it. They'll go out to do an evaluation at home. If it's mental health, I go out. So um, a lot of that, we do fuel assistance for the whole town from our, uh, starts in uh, November and it goes through till April. And it's not just for seniors, we do families. And we're not reimbursed for it, so we do Oh, we probably did over 105 last year, this past year, and still we'll still do. Um, we just finished up our report, so um, that is something that uh, we provide. Uh, they had three home visits. Uh, there were 16 office visits at the council. 15 meetings or I mean meetings or events attended were two. Telephone calls made of 56, referrals made of five, duplicated numbers, which means seniors who have been there before, and, and this is their second time around, or third, or maybe more, uh, were 89. Unduplicated numbers, which are the first timers who c have come in for the first time, are 50. Um, the, uh, the, and the meetings that they attended, uh, Nancy and Jenny wanted you to know that this past month the outreach department attended a conference at Lombardo's in Randolph hosted by the South Shore Services entitled Aging is Everyone's Future. The conference had information booths and a workshop on how to care for someone with memory loss. The main speaker was Dr. Alan Geller a neurologist who presented on the differences between normal signs of memory loss as a person ages versus other forms of memory loss. We enjoyed mingling with other professionals and we were able to pick up more resources which, is all, which are always needed. And that's all I have. Does the board have any questions or comments to make on the Old business, the after bus update, you pretty much did it. The only, the one thing I wanted to add was if you didn't see the article that was in, I think it was the ledger, about the uh, the bus route that the town administrator is working with the Gatra people on. It's going to be a test route that will go through a certain period, a certain area of Situate, stopping at specific locations. I know the Town Hall, Situate Harbor, Greenbush, and I don't know where else they're going to stop. They're working on setting up this route and establishing what days of the week it's going to be. I think potentially right now it's four days a week, Florence. Mm -hmm. And um, that's just going to be a test route to see if there's enough demand to expand it later on, but um, primarily what the Gatra bus will be doing now when it starts in July, hopefully, is picking up the seniors and the disabled and getting them where they want to go, taking over the whole transportation department from Florence, so that's going to be a huge help. It had, it had to be in situation because wouldn't it be great if it would move? We, that's what we're that's working, what working on right towards. now. I, I attended a meeting in Marshfield on the 6th of this month. And uh, we met, I, we met uh, with Gatra as well as uh, Pembroke, Marshfield, and Hanover. Which uh, Hanover is a new addition to Gatra as well as we. And what we were doing is starting the process of planning where we can connect, how we can connect, um, so that we can join. So the whole, the, the, the goal is to connect every South Shore town eventually, so that people can just go from here all the way to Plymouth. Um, the thing, I think the thing that is a win-win about Gatra, and all of the towns, and as much as uh, research as I did, I, I did not run into a negative about GATRA. GATRA is not costing the town five cents. 
we pay a tribute every year since to the MBTA on the cherry sheet. It is there since the train was put in. Right now, the amount we pay is $116,000. And for that, there is nothing given. With us taking GATRA, the $116,000 is put over to GATRA, uh, and they run the transportation. The cost of our transportation, because we do, last year, 6,400 rides in situate. We're the largest ridership in the South Shore, except for um, Braintree or Weymouth, one of the larger towns. But we're much larger than our bordering towns in terms of numbers, Marshfield, Han uh, Hanover, any of them. So um, this is, so we spend with the link and with the staff, we spend 93,000, approximately $93,000 a year on transportation. So that 116,000 is, is, you know, put right towards that. And as the ridership increases, we hope, um, you know, then we have a case for more monies from GATRA to expand the services, as did other times. So, you know, so that is why when I say GATRA is a win-win, it really is a win-win situation. Lawrence, has it been determined yet? Is there going to be a cost for the... We have, I, you know, be. I have to sit down with Frank and we have, there will be a cost, yeah. but it will be very minimal. It will be very minimal. And will, will the cost be still made here to arrange? Yeah, yeah. We, are, we will have, for the first few months, we'll have the dial a ride and it will be coming out of here. We have the vendors for GATRA. The Council on Aging is going to run GATRA. And um, so we're the vendors, and that what because we've been doing transportation for so long. And what we're going to do is, um, you know, we're um, we're we're just we're going to work with GATRA to expand everything that we have and, and the rides. But we we eventually will go to Flag Down. Um, if you go to Marshville and you go to Roach Brothers or you go to any of the, um, the stores that are, are over in that direction, you'll see on the side of the Gatra bus it says, flag us down. And literally, you can flag them down and they'll stop and pick you up. Uh, it's really nice and the days will expand because right now we're doing Monday through Friday. Marshfield does um, uh, seven days. Six days uh, through Saturday. And it's not just for seniors, it's open to everybody. Initially, it will be open to seniors and disabled, and then within a few months, it should we start the routes. But we have to figure out where those routes are. But initially, it will be dial a ride because that's, you know, until the routes are set up in a firm, um, it will be dial a ride. Even that and most one people. Trial ride, but no, 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 that's no, for that's, no, that's for anybody. Okay. Yeah. We're yeah. going to have a, two separate programs. We're going to have, like, the your van program, mm -hmm. which does the medical rides. Mm -hmm. That's going to be handled the same way it's handled. That's now. link, you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Well, link. yeah. well the, your vans that take people to the grocery store and down to the... That's going to be on Gatlin. Okay, but is, is Q still going to be scheduling when those people yeah. are picked up? You know, oh, are you yes. still going to have the same yes. days and yes. everything? So yeah. we're going to be having Gatra drivers yeah. do the regular senior vans that you yeah. have now. Yeah. Then we're going to have the second system yeah. that is going to be open, available to anybody. Mm -hmm. The one, the route that's going to go around town. Right. The experimental route or the test route, whatever you want. Well, it won't go around town. <laughs> it's going to go in part to of Greenbush. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Town Hall, I think. Yeah. 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 What about moving the needs to the hospital? Oh, no, no. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, no, that will be Gatra will take over our transportation. Really? Yeah. But we will run it. The chemotherapy and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. No, that's a different program. That's the link. That's the a separate regular program. Van. The regular van ride. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it's two different systems. One for the seniors mm -hmm. and disabled, and then the other one is for everybody, the test route, or the experimental route, whatever. Okay. Anybody else have anything to say about the actor? Uh, I'm 
sure it'll be spelled out in the Mariner, too. Yeah, like, yeah, once it's... Once they get yeah. it ironed out, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, I have another meeting on the 21st. Yeah. So it's going to be a long process. I mean, I've got a whole lot of meetings scheduled. So. Okay. It's the story of your life, Lawrence. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting there, though. The end is in sight. It's been a long year and a half. Once again, Florence is getting ticked off at me because it sounds like I'm getting paid to say these things, but I'm not. You know, the article was clearly um, clear in the in the Mariner, but Florence, without Florence, we would not have Gatra, and that's that's, true. that's the bottom line. So, as long as we have an audience, so there. All right. Congratulations to everyone because we have Florence. All right, Florence, I will collect after you. <laughs> <laughs> I will pay you after okay, you. Uh, affordable Housing Senior Center. Um, this was a project that, a potential project that we talked about at our last couple of meetings. Uh, we had uh, a, a large meeting with the people from Affordable Housing Trust and the Housing Authority talking about the potential possible swapping of properties between those two entities and maybe doing a senior center in the midst of affordable housing down on the driftway. And Pat Butler, who's the chairman of the Housing Authority Board, had a meeting a couple of weeks ago and they were not able to address this on their agenda because they're still discussing the um, situation with the problem with the signatures for that. Was it their budget? Was it? Is it their budget? It's the part of uh, it's the budget. The part of the budget that comes from the be, state that yeah, um, that had to be signed off. They had to be signed off. off. Yeah. So and they, it's it's for emergency sir, it, uh, repairs. And right. I think it's one hundred and forty thousand dollars. Yeah. So they're still dealing with that problem, and they have not been able to talk about the property swap that we had talked about when John Denning was here with us. Uh, so that's still on the back burner. The other thing that we had talked about at the last meeting was everybody coming with a list of preferences that they wanted for um, you know potential sites for a new senior center. And I want to put that off until we get through the new business, because that may take a little bit longer. So I just want to address the new business. Um, Florence and I had talked about new programs that she wants to bring in, expanding the caregivers program and instituting a bereavement program which hopefully will take place down at the uh, Situa Harbor Community Building and uh, the other thing we want to discuss is establishing a position of a volunteer coordinator. It's an unpaid position but it's somebody that we need who would be willing to take on the task of organizing and coordinating the volunteers that we have to assist Florence and the staff with some of the programs that she wants to institute new programs and with helping the, with the old ones, the original ones. So, um, do you want to talk about the volunteer program first? Uh, well, that coordinator yeah, I, I, a coordinator, I mean, right now we're trying to use. Uh, you know, our, our goal is to use Pier 44. It certainly, for us, it is, it's always been so beneficial. This is a senior center. We have 4,666 seniors in the town of Situa. We have a lot of these people are 85 and over. So, and we see a lot of deaths here. We see a lot of people who die, a lot of our seniors who pass away. And it's just part of the process. But there are certain things we can't do. We have a caregivers group uh, that's an Alzheimer's support group. We have it over there. And it is, you know, it, it, it really isn't the place to have a group where somebody is and maybe crying, maybe, you know, discussing, I'm really, I'm so upset. I, I really, I lost patience with my husband and I feel terrible and people walking in that door, walking in this door, you know, and there is no privacy. Our offices are tiny. 
You can't get more than two people in any of the offices. If you had a family, you couldn't do it, but you certainly cannot do groups here. Not those kind of groups. The, um, the, the, my plan for using um, situate, uh, the, the building is that uh, the Alzheimer's group or dementia group or, or the group that caregivers are, are homes 24-7. They're, they're, they're taking care, and they're usually elderly. Usually what we see are people who are coming in here who are elderly as well, and they're not in the best shape. And yet they're with their loved ones every day, all day, all night. They, do, they deal with the sundowning, they deal with the different mood swings, they deal with, and, and at the same time, they're watching their loved one die a little at a time. And, um, and they have no respite. They don't get out to have their hair done, they don't get to the movies, they don't get a break, period. And so, for some of them, this program means a lot to them. The, the one here, but there's a lot of them who cannot, there are several who cannot come because they have no one to watch their husband or no one to watch their wife or no one to watch their mother, whatever the case may be. What I would like to do at the Harbor Community Building is I would like to have, there are three rooms now there, you know, that can be utilized. And I would like to use one room for a caregiver support group for our groups and our people, not only do we spend time talking about, um, you know, what their lives are like, but we also provide, you know, information on the latest resource, uh, res resources that are out there. And, um, you know, if there's, if there's coaching, we may suggest that they, you know, we'll call still me and ask them if they can have so many minutes, uh, you know, so much time for Alzheimer's coaching or, but, uh, we want them to be able to come. And one of the things that this would allow us, if we set up a room, you know, that can be taken down right after it's used, because that's how we have to use that building, um, to, to, for them to bring their loved ones with them, the ones who are transportable, the ones who can, you know, can come, who are well enough, and I don't mean you know, mentally, I mean physically well enough that the person feels comfortable having them there. And we would have volunteers, and we would have music, and we would have drawings. And while they're, um, while they're, um, the person that cares for them is in the support group, they would be in a safe place, and they would be cared for. And, um, and this would be, you know, this would be something that would allow two things to happen. One, the, some stimulation for the person who is going through uh, the mental deficits, and the other is, is just a, a respite for the person and some support and a place that they know they can come in and bring the person with them and they don't have to worry about saying, no, I can't come. So that is, you know, that's important. The bereavement, as I said, we have a lot of patients, we have a lot of people who die. Right now, the only place that people have to go for bereavement is the uh, Norwell NVA. And um, it's sometimes it's difficult for them to get over there. Um, if they don't drive or, you know, um, it's just, it's not, it's not that, I and mean, they do a wonderful job, don't get me wrong, they do a terrific job. But sometimes, for some seniors, they just don't get there. And it's a strange place. For our seniors, they know, they know us, they know the place, they're more comfortable. It's not an unknown, and that's important when you're, you know, in a, somewhat of an altered state in that you're really grieving, and grief does a lot of strange things in terms of how you, how you express yourself or how you feel when you're grieving a loss. So those are things that we should be doing that, that you know, you judge a community by the way they treat their elder and their children. Well, they do a good job, pretty good job here with the children, but they don't do a very good job with the elders. So, you know, it really needs to be these things need to be addressed. It's just a matter of humanity. Um, we also would like to see that, 
the, the, what we need over there is we want to see if the programs can grow. I know we have the yoga here that's going next week, and we have the chair yoga, which has been immensely popular. We can only take 12 or 14 people in the yoga because we, you know, you see what we have here. And um, over there, there, there's a lot of room. So um, what we want to see. Pardon me? How many do you feel like you could get in over there? Yeah, um, it, with, the, with one room, one room alone, we could get at least 24 yoga people. At least double the capacity. And, 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 and the, same with, the same with cardio. And, you know, because when you do cardio, that's, you know, you're moving, you're, you know, so you do need the space. So, um, and I would like to develop more <coughs> health and wellness for seniors. I'd like to see some weight-bearing exercises done over there because that has a lot of, um, um, it really helps with osteoporosis or osteopenia, helps to strengthen the bones, and it's really important. So there are things that we should be doing for our seniors that we could do over in that building. We could do pretty well. Well, one of the things that we need in order to get these programs off the ground, though, is uh, volunteers. Yes, We need absolutely. people that will be willing to help out with the, uh, the loved ones of the people who are yeah. coming to yeah. talk to you. Yeah, I uh, already have four people who have already stepped up to the plate and said they volunteer. That would volunteer. For okay. Yeah, for that. Um, the position that we want to have is the volunteer coordinator. That will help if we can get this position filled. And this is a plea that's going out to the general populace as well as the people here, if anybody is interested. Um, this position of volunteer coordinator is vital to the, this expansion of the programs that Florence wants to do. She can only do so much herself. And the staff itself has a lot of responsibilities. So this person would be able to recruit new volunteers and supervise the work that the volunteers are doing. But um, and also look out now, look out right now. I'm planning two lunches. Oh, that's right. So, and so one is we just had a 90th birthday party yesterday. Today I had a directors meeting that we had to we had to host. So and we're going to do the July 10th. That's the July 4th, and we're going to do that at the, the Harbor Building. We're also going to do, uh, the we do the kickoff to Heritage Days every year at Maritime. We're going to do that again. Neither place has a kitchen. Neither place has a kitchen. So we're really relegated to, we have to, you know, find the cheapest caterer to find the way we can, you know, uh, feed these people, what the capacity is, you know, uh, when we have an event, you know, uh, resource, research a menu, I mean, I'm doing this, I'm doing it all. Can I just say that it's sounding for a volunteer position, mm -hmm. I think you're scaring people off. So, well, but you would, but I think that may, wouldn't you be open to uh, more than one person so that if somebody wanted to be in charge of helping with the luncheons, oh, sure. then that would be their job. And just breaking it apart, because I wonder if it might be a little bit, you know, sounding like it's a huge job. And if it's a volunteer unpaid, you may not. Find somebody sure. willing to, but certainly maybe mm -hmm. there'd be a variety, somebody that'd be willing to take yeah. a piece. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think you know, in terms of using this building, I agree there should be volunteers there. But I spoke to the town manager. Every program that's over there has to come under the council on aging. She has no problem with the programs being there, but they have to fall within the criteria. So we are really responsible for anything that goes in there. Mm -hmm. So it means that um, we, if we got volunteers, or we had a volunteer for, for that position to get volunteers to staff the, the community building, you know, they could work under us and then they could, you know, um, do the paperwork and, and uh, you know, uh, train the volunteer, which would be a big help. I mean, there's not a lot for them to do. I don't, you know, unless some people just um, are very, you know, a little nervous, like when we have our front desk, it takes, you know, some people come in and they're a little nervous about doing the phones and all. So basically over there, you're looking for somebody similar to what you have here. Right. That can sit at the desk right. and right. be the. Right, right. 
So, you know, somebody that's there and is senior needs help or, you know, they can call over here and somebody can go right over. But that place is not going to be just open. It's just going to be when you get programs right. right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they just have to be there when the program right. Yeah. 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 Or right. they're going to be assisting if they're going to be helping run the program, whatever's, mm -hmm. depending on what it is. You know, like the, for the, uh, the but caregiver. Possibly it could be a two person um, position mm -hmm. because uh, there's all, always the decorating and mm -hmm. it, for the parties and it's and I think that you know that's it in, in planning the pe the people that will volunteer at the luncheons and picking up the the decorations and the paper plates and all that. Mm -hmm. So you know I think that I think Meg's idea of sort of splitting it a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. might might work well just because oh, a person like could devote more <laughs> could devote more time to well a big part time job. You, it could be a big part time yeah. 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 Well, let's put it this way. Right now I'm doing it all, so yeah. if I can get somebody yeah. to help, yeah. 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 And yeah. Me, I'm, I'm ahead of the game. So yeah. if I can get somebody to help even even a little bit, I'm ahead of the game. Yeah. So, But if you'd like to volunteer, or just to be a volunteer, not necessarily be the coordinator, <coughs> the one or two coordinators, or three coordinators, contact Florence down here at the Council on Aging. Well, I mean, a perfect example is is the Fourth of July luncheon, which this year is going to be held on July 10th. Mm -hmm. And I would assume now that we can, we're going to have it at the Harbor Building, we may very well have more than 40 people. And you know, Jerry, myself, um, often Joan, and often Pam, we always waiter and waitress and clean up, etc. For all these luncheons, well, 40 people keeps us busy. I mean, I've been doing it for three years now, and the 40 people. But if we're going to have a Fourth of July party, which is, and, and Florence is arranged for entertainment, you know, live entertainment, and we have 60 or 70 people that sign up, we're really going to need volunteers to help waitress and clean up. And you know, Jerry ends up pu pu putting away all the tables and chairs. Oh, and I mean, <laughs> so so what what Florence just said is is true. If you're going to be around. In the, on, on, the, on that time period on the 10th, please call Florence. We can use your help. I'm, I'm serious. Um, and it's lots of fun. I mean, you, you, you're out, you're kind of at the party, but um, you have to work it. <laughs> but it's still, it's still very festive and fun. Yeah. But, but it, I have a feeling we're going to have more than 40 people, for sure. I hope so. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. And so. Please, yeah. jump on board. Yeah. Come on in. Make your reservation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, anybody else on the board have any questions or comments to make on the potential new programs and the volunteer board now? Okay. Um, let's do reports and then we're going to get to <coughs> our uh, preferences discussion that we left off from last month. Would you like to do? The South Shore Elder sure. Services report. Yeah, Ed Flynn, who is the director of South Shore Elder Services, is, is has retired. And the board at our last meeting, uh, we had a search committee that did a lot of work interviewing people. And then they brought a name to the board, how it works. They bring a name to the board, and the board either accepts it or doesn't. And then they have to wait five days for the state to approve it. And so the board did approve it, and the state approved it as of Tuesday. So the new director is going to be Sandra Lindsay. She is has been part of South Shore Elder Services, and she's worked very closely with Ed, and has done a lot of the work of uh, the last six or seven months. And uh, I am very impressed by her. So we're happy to see that she's going to be the new director. And then uh, Ed had. Um, we had a vote on that. He had come up with a contract with the union workers with an increase in pay, which is also given the same thing as given to the, regular, the other workers who want union. And they came up with a contract for three years, and that was approved. And as you probably know, the um, picnic was canceled. Uh, 
for bad weather, but also uh, because of the storm, the parking lots and everything were filled with seaweed and rocks. So there was no way they could hold wow. a picnic. And then tomorrow is the big volunteer luncheon that South Shore Elting has, which is a big affair. And it's for all the volunteers in the communities that are under South Shore Elting. That includes Meals on Wheels, people who do a lot of volunteer work with the working with that. Sure. Yeah, they were very pleased to hear about Francis Progress with Gatra. They said, you could have. They're supposed to buy you a good one. Okay, I'm waiting. Most of the other topics are there were about things they're doing around town about uh, ramps and so forth and different mm -hmm. kinds of buildings. So this pertains to this meeting too much. Yeah. So actually, I'll look at the last one. It's very interesting. Good. It's pretty steep. It's going yeah. on around town. Good. And uh, that's about it. And they're more consistent with their meetings now, aren't they? Yes, they are. Yeah. yeah. Just well, they've got yeah, a lot of their plans. Yeah. yeah. I mean, trying to keep track of what all the new buildings and. Um, and I told you about the memo. Did you, get, did you get the memo? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Back to backtrack. Um, at our last meeting, we talked about the having everybody bring a list of their top three preferences for a new senior center location. This stemmed from the conversation that we all had with John Denny, who said that we wanted to keep all our options open. And he was the one who brought up the possibility of the land swap and maybe a community center, a uh, senior center on Driftway. And because we had no idea if and when and where we will end up someday. We wanted to keep talking about this. And Richard and I talked earlier this afternoon. He came up with a great idea. Instead of us just throwing out our preferences now, because um, it's been a long time since we've talked about specifics, why don't we tonight at least start the conversation talking about the criteria? What would we want a location to have? What are the specifics that we think are important? Isn't that what? Yep. You want to? You want to? Yeah. So uh, expand on it. What uh, you know, I have been part of uh, previous conversations, and mm -hmm. I'm not saying we haven't discussed criteria before. Uh, but uh, what would help uh, me and maybe <coughs> others uh, is to just kind of run through an exercise where we um, lay out the criteria, of, have a conversation about whether the most important of the ones we've laid out um, before we get into, you know, the possible, and I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't call it locations, I, I'd call it kind of a solution for mm -hmm. us because when you get to things like, you know, would Gates work? and people think of the current building, mm -hmm. um, well, what if it was knocked down, something that was put up? Right. Um, so I just kind of expand the language a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, it's not going to, we're not going to get through this tonight. We, but I feel like we, it's, I'm sorry, that's what no, that I feel like, no, we've been talking about this, you know, I feel like it's redundant to do no, that. No, I don't, because I'll tell you, we have been talking about this, but we've been all around Mayberry Bush. I think, you know, what we've said as, as a senior center is, you know, what we don't have. And, um, you know, we've already said that we do not expect Marshfield, and we do not expect Duxbury. We don't. We really don't. But we do expect, you know, some uh, 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 a facility that meets the needs of the seniors, and and so I think we do have in everyone. I don't know how many of you remember that in 2007 there was a vote for the senior center. Mm -hmm. Okay, we still have all of the criteria for that. I mean, that was. Um, that was going to be built on Brand Street up at the library, behind the library. And um, that was, um, you know, it, it, it was pretty much, it was laid out in terms of what they saw as 
things that they would like to see in, in a senior center. And I think that was, you know, based on a lot of the focus groups and things like that. I mean, we've gone from community center to senior center to, you know, and I mean, we were in a position where we know we're desperate for a building, and, uh, but we also need to uh, pay attention to the constituents that we deal with, which are the seniors. I mean, that's my responsibility, are the seniors. And so I think what we need to do is what do we have to have what do we have to have? Mm -hmm. And whether it fits into um, a community <coughs> center or not, I mean, how long, how many, how long do we operate? What times do, uh, you know, are we operating 8 to 8.30 to 4.30 every day? And that's when we hold, uh, do all the seniors business. And, um, and that's, and so that lends itself to anything else. Um, but, but we still are going to be present, and what do we need to be present in there? And what, what is the biggest focus for seniors today? What do seniors want? Well, seniors want to keep themselves in good shape, but they also want to be educated, and the best thing in the world for seniors is to keep their minds stimulated. So, you know, I think, you know, we know we need offices, we need, five offices, we need a conference room, we need a couple of um, um, uh, rooms that will, will uh, be able to be used for programs, for uh, uh, different types of programs, say a computer, computers, because you know, I think that that's something we don't do, uh, we used to do well here, we don't do it anymore because we don't have the money. And, um, Things, things that lend themselves to things that will enrich the seniors' lives. And what the seniors want themselves. So I, I think that's important because if you have a constituency, you really need to know what it is they're looking for. And I mean all seniors. Um, so, but the other thing is too, um, can we fit it into a building and can it be used for anything else? And do the seniors want that? I mean, what, what the, what's on the table now from the town what is on the table from the town is that we, uh, we mimic um, Hingham. And Hingham uh, at one point did exactly what um, they did, uh, they, they are planning to do. Hingham took their junior high school and they turned it into the town hall. They enlarged, they put uh, out, out buildings and uh, they put the police department, the admin school administrators, the uh, recreation department, and the senior center in those spots that were on the first floor. And then they had the town hall. And then over that, there are a couple of offices, and one of them is the communication center. Now the South Shore runs. So that means the senior center can't go up. What happened over there is that they have a huge parking lot. It's not big enough. It's all the town's business there. So they need a huge, huge amount of parking. And so there's, people are parked everywhere. And the seniors, even though they had designated parking, people would park in, this, in the senior spots. And no one was gonna tell them, so so the, the upshot of this is that 15, 20 years down the line, right now, the seniors are doing a feasibility study at, at, with the blessings of the town fathers, the town selectmen, to look for land to build another senior center because there's really not enough space in that, in that complex for everything, so they've got to refigure this. Re, re, so, you know, so you need to you need to know that that's what we're starting with. There will be, I, I would assume, if they're going to mimic that, which is what they tell me, then there'll be a spot for the seniors and there'll be a spot for recreation, whether they're adequate or not. The thing is, with this kind of planning, we really don't have a say. You know, it goes where it's a, where they they tell you it's going to go. 
And um, so I don't know, you know, the best way to go about that. I know what we need, I know what we have to have, I know what we should have, and I can tell you that. But I can't tell you if that's going to be something we're going to get. But I think the seniors and this, I would really, 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 if I gave you all, uh, if I passed a pad out and you could just write down the one thing you would like to see in your senior center, I would really appreciate that because I think that's what we have to, that's what we have to look at. We got a focus group right here and it doesn't cost any money. <laughs> so, which is the best, which is best. So, if you wouldn't mind that, I'd really appreciate it if, if I did that. I honestly want your input. We need it. We are here to serve you, not the other way around. So, this is, you know, this is important to us. But you need to be stakeholders, because you are stakeholders. And, um, and that's, that's important, and that's what Betty's been trying to say, and Betty's done a great job, and I really thank this group of people who have come out and who have been so diligent in this. I mean, let me tell you, it's breathed life into, into a lot of seniors, so, you know, that's, that's really a great thing. So, I don't know where you want to go with there, Richard, but I think that, um, Um, we're going we're gonna to send over a piece of paper. Are you talking about square footage? Are you talking about, okay. Yeah, <coughs> square footage, uh, All right. parking, uh, you know, ease of access. You would access, need at so. least 60, 60 yeah. parking spaces. You would need a minimum of 60 parking spaces. You would have to have that. Not all seniors are there at all times, but this is, mm -hmm. this is what, I mean, if you went over to some of the senior centers, you'd see that their, their parking spaces are full. So you need a minimum of 60 parking spaces. For what we need, for the spaces that we need, for what we would put into the building, I would say that we would need at least 7,500 square feet. At least 7,500 square feet. I'm not looking for 10,000, I'm not looking for two floors, I'm looking for the basics. And that would give us, um, a health room and it would give us, uh, you know, that, that we could have a nurse that would come in and do wellness checks and it would give us a lot of access to a lot of things that seniors need. We could have our veteran here there, our veterans agent there uh, day a week because so many of the seniors get veterans benefits and are eligible for vet veterans benefits. So that's what we would need. We would need an office for the director. We would need an office for outreach. It, that, you know, um, that we need an office for transportation. That transportation office has to be pretty well wired because we use a radio and, you know, um, we, we do, that's how we connect to our van. Um, we would need, um, kitchen. We, we need a kitchen. We do not need, we need something bigger than this, but we don't need something that much bigger than this. Does it need to be in public transportation? Uh, 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 get a get a get a get that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That would be a preference. Yeah. If you could work that. Yeah. Well, so, so what do you mean by public transportation now? I mean, the gantry bus? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I said. We have Gatcha. Yeah, I said I'm Gatcha. Yeah, I said Gatcha. I don't know if Bill's going to be picking people. I don't know if we're going to be on the green bush parking lot. So we would need that. We need parking. We need. Um, it would be nice to have a little bit of of um, outside space for our seniors. Mm -hmm. You know, benches. No, I I'm just. Johnny thought stuff because I know that the whole gate school is an ideal for what you're looking for and, um, and it, you don't think that it wouldn't in hang up but the, the couple things that I'm thinking about is one you learn from what happened in hang up and make sure you don't wouldn't make those mistakes yeah. you know you look at how centrally located that is. I mean that you know it's so close to where the library location is. I mean between that's the perfect location. Well, we have the location. We have the best the location. Yeah. Um, and you know the other thing, 
obviously the whole building has to be updated and handicap accessible and all of those kinds of things. But boy, you would have a gymnasium, you would have a track, you would That's have... That's seven years you're talking. You're yeah. talking a minimum of seven years. We can't we, wait on that. First of all, to be fair, and, and, I, and I, you know, I don't want to stop the whole thing again. There are 4,666 seniors in this town, and 70% of them own their own homes, and they pay taxes, and they have been here to build schools and build roads and build bike paths and, and, and use CPC money for fields, and wonderful, because kids, kids are great. But seniors should have more than the crumbs on the table. They absolutely should. But I think you're wrong when you say seven years, because I think oh, I no, think no. a middle no. school is gonna would be much faster than seven years. No, and, and, and if and the I middle school if the middle school is where it's both where where you people would like it, where the group would like it, it's going to be the town hall. When they pull the town hall down. They will pull down the police station and the fire station at the same time. Where do they go? Where do they go? And they are not going to be able to build a school, rehab the gates, put out to the gates at the same time. If you pull that school, that town hall down and start the, 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 the school, you have a police station and a fire station that have to be built at an enormous cost. Before I just going think up. that at this point, because I actually I met with somebody else last week about um, the library project, which is clipping along a lot faster than I think most people realize. Mm -hmm. um, the Gate School project, this, and what the select would want to do, all of a sudden it's a lot. And I think that our best bet is to make sure we're flexible. And like John Donahue said, look at all our options. That's make what we're sure doing. that we can see a possibility everywhere. Tonight. So yeah. my thought is, you know, let's make sure we say, how could we make gates work? How could we make uh, uh But what do we do for work? seven years or five years? What do we do here, huh? John, I mean, John Donnelly sat we, right there behind Pam, and he quoted five to seven years. Yeah. That, that's what John said I, to us. I mean, you know, you don't say to a school, well, we're waiting five years for, for a school when there is a critical need for a school. There is a critical need for a senior center. <laughs> or for a, for a new you home. You don't have senior. to convince me of that. Well, I just, but I'm and asking I both you a question. Know the real is how we may end up waiting that length of time, but in the meantime, this is what we're here for. You know, this is this is what this meeting is about. We may end up, you know, um, and I certainly will be gone by the time Gate School comes. <laughs> 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 And so this is what you're saying to them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have to think of that game. I understand, I understand that, but I also understand what costs are, what taxes are, <coughs> how many seniors are just, are right now, Meg, are just making it. What do they do if their taxes go up $400 a year? That's huge for some. That's what I'm saying. It isn't just one-sided. It's not, you know, what I'd like. Want is not need. Want is never need. I think it's a project. We can't we can't stop talking about this. We can't. I, I just think we have to look at all the different things and how can we make it work. And not yes. say, you know, that that isn't going to work. Yeah. We got to say, okay, well, when here's a project, here's a project, yeah. here's a project. I mean, when I went, I met with this woman in the library, and I said, why couldn't the senior center be attached? if this mm -hmm. goes through. Unfortunately, that, that is a huge grant. That particular grant stipulates that there can't be any other program <coughs> full-time. Yeah. So it could, but, um, but I just think we have to look at every single thing because there's a lot of things being talked about in town. There's a lot of things going on. We have to look at every one and see how we could fit in it. Right, right. But in, in how do you kind of compare and judge each one? That's where I, I kind of start with we need a set of, of high priority criteria 
Uh, and then let's look at each one of these and let's you know, size it up against the criteria so that we've got a, a thorough look at everything. Uh, we know what we want. Uh, we know where we stand with each of these. And we can you know, then go to let's narrow the field down to these two or three things um, and chase those. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're not quite as focused as I'd like mm -hmm. to see us be. Um, and we get into discussions about gates that don't really move us forward. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I think we had that, you know, the community center piece we put together? Mm -hmm. We have I a lot of that information. Right. Right. I mean, we really sketched out what we were looking for. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that anything's really changed. I, mean, I, think, I think, you know, I think, Richard, your, your goal of being organized and focused is wonderful. <laughs> but I think we all, here on this board anyway, and I'm sure a lot of people involved in this wanting of a new senior center have a bit we have a basic set of criteria basic um, I, I, I just don't think you know we, we just ran through some of them but you know we, we all we well, talk, let's put them on paper yeah we can put it on paper and then as paper. each idea comes to be then we can do the comparison yeah. well, I think and we need I, to put them on paper and I think yeah. we need to agree on what the highest priority ones are yeah and, and uh, you know, I'm not well, quite as confident that we're, you know, if you did it right now, you'd all agree on what they were. And mm -hmm. I'd just like to have at least a kind of a preliminary conversation with the group about can we agree that this is what we're shooting for? Um, and well, as you say, you know, we've got our musts, you know, and then we've got our would like to haves. Mm -hmm. um, but if we don't get our like to haves, at least, you know, let's go get our musts. But if a, a site doesn't even meet the musts... Well, I think we have the musts in that yeah. plan. I mean, I, yeah, yeah. Maybe Richard hasn't seen a copy of that. One from five years ago? No, no, no. Part of the, the feasibility yeah. study. Yeah. Because we only meet once a month. And, it, 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 you know, it seems to me like we, we just sort of keep... Yeah. The, the ball keeps rolling yeah. around here. Um, but, but, it, but I think perhaps... If, Richard saw that you know that that uh, feasibility study. Mm -hmm. the, the no, study. Wasn't a, yeah. Well, for the feasibility committee. Yeah, I'll, I'll the presentation. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is that what we what we I mean we don't we need a home for the seniors. Whether mm -hmm. it be a senior center or a community center, we need a new home for the seniors. And I think we're all agreed upon that. I think that's one thing that we are agreed on. That. Um, that we, the seniors need, a, uh, they need another place. That's a must, a new town hall is not a must. Sorry. So, so, you know, and that's, that, that's, you know, and I think it will really, it comes down to, you know, um, what the consensus of, of anything like this, it will come down to town cons consensus. It will. And it always does. Well, I mean, I think Jerry just made a good point. I, I, I don't know if everybody heard him, but the town hall is not a must. The district is built in 1950, uh, 53 years old. So what? Uh, well, I don't think they're complaining about yes, they the were. town they hall. Were. It's no. just part of the whole picture well, they of what they're, they're trying to do. It's not adequate for their needs. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know. I guess I hadn't heard much yeah. about the town hall. I just knew that that was kind of the yeah. one of the moving pieces that they're trying to kind of look at when they're looking at all. Well, they're going to tear it down. Yeah, it, tear that, it. That's going to really move. Yeah. It's going to move right exactly. on out. Yeah. I mean, when they're not even going to build. build they could build up on it. Well, know? the first they're going to have they're going to have the different forums all of, all over the town with the three hundred and seventy-five thousand yeah. dollars, and I think those forums are by invitation. And um, the um, fir invitation. first yeah, one is the eighteenth of January. So. Yeah. I didn't have to do it. I'm sorry. I have a long day today. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, they uh, so so they're they're doing you know they're doing like anything else. This is a major major project. This is not a small project. This is huge. And so in order to get it by, you were not you, you know you've got to have before you even can can even go to the point of town meeting, you've got to you've got to make sure you've got um, a, a horse in the race, 
and, and that's that's the, that's the why the feasibility money is there. And it could be. I thought the feasibility money was really to look at every single town building. No, it isn't. It, the eighty-five thousand dollars was for um, the the person who's going to oversee all of town well, building. I thought the three seventy-five was to well, look at all the, the buildings. Well, the feasibility, the language is in our. You got the the letter. It said the fiscal year 2013 budget recently approved at town meeting provides $375,000 for the town to embark upon a plan of action that will research, analyze, design, and propose a series of recommendations to town meeting and voters that will ultimately address our current and future facility needs. So that's to look at everything. All the buildings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. building. So this means that they have to have this done before town meeting. And mm -hmm. I don't know, you know, what what they will be looking for a town meeting, but don't forget so that, that, that I, you know, it would have to be also would also have to be they have no drawings, they have no architect, and they've only got three hundred and seventy five thousand. That's what I mean when I'm saying time. If in town meeting, if that should pass, it will they will only propose. Mm -hmm. They will only propose that this be taken one step further, and that's to hire an architect to do the plans and the whole bit, and then you have to award the contracts after that, and you have to go out for bid after that. And I, feel, I mean, you're talking seven to ten years before a project of that <laughs> size can be done. And even the library has to close two years if they get that grant. That library will close for two years. So this is what I'm saying when I say it's not, I mean, it's there, but it is going to take time. It has to be. It oh, I know, to. I know it has. But I think that there's a lot of moving parts, and I think that we should be sure we're talking to every yeah. single group that's involved in it. And make sure that, every, and look and figure every out, hole in the wall. could we fit here? Could we fit here? Could we fit here? Because there better be some changes. I mean, I do believe something's going to change with some of the buildings. They've got to start with it doesn't mean they'll do it all at once, though. So, I know, uh, and I don't think they will. I mean, I don't think the town would be able to support this. No, but we just yeah. have to have our eyes open wide and figure out yeah. where we can. Yeah, I think where we can I fit. think that that job will be, you know, what has to be done, and you do it by pri prioritizing building. And that's, you know, it's been a long time since they did anything, so it's going to be what's the critical need, and that's what. Um, you know, that's, that's what they've got to know. They've got to know what the critical need is, how safe buildings are, what's the quality of building, how much would it take to replace it, is it worth tearing down, is it worth rehabbing? All of that has to study. They have to study all of that. It's not, it's not going to be achieved easily. Are we able to say anything? Okay. No. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. <laughs> All right. I know you will, Bruce. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put all of the criteria that we've come up with right now in uh, an email to you and work with that, add to it, and we're going to just pick right up where we left off here and we'll incorporate what the audience has as their wish list. And let's use that as the foundation for the discussion at the next meeting. And it's going to be interesting to see if what actually comes up in the discussion at the meeting on June 18th, next Monday. Mm. Um, what kind of questions they ask of us. So, um, Did you get the report back on the uh, no. air quality? No, I know. I never no. got the report back on the air quality. No. No. Because the main thing is we can't wait five years. Yeah, we've got to do something in a year. Well, I'm concerned. Okay. Right. Richard, you in agreement with all this? Yep. Okay. Um, does anybody else have any comments on the one? Of course, I have to have a comment. Make it quick. <laughs> no, go ahead. No, I didn't see the clock. I'm going <laughs> to yeah. get a new strategy. Um, <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, I watch it too. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh. I'm going to oh, think fast. No, no, it's not. No. Um, well, I forgot my comment. Thank you. Thankfully, thankfully.
I was like, I think it's sort of a question too, but it's okay. Um, I, I, I think that, you know, especially like if May can make that meeting, if we can all go to that meeting, at least for a short time, on June 18th, even though it's, it's, it's what, 7, 6, 30 to 9? Yeah. I, I, you don't have to stay the whole time. But that's when all the departments will be there, and there will be a lot of input, and, you know. Yeah, so, anyway. Okay. And where is that? Monday. No, where? Oh, oh, the uh, PFO report. The harbor. Harbor. Okay. No other questions? Mm -hmm. Nothing comments? Okay, I'm going to adjourn the meeting at 7 18. Okay.